Uh, anything you say may be used against you in court. Do you understand? Yes. You have the right to the presence of an attorney before and during any questioning. Do you understand? Yes. If you cannot afford an attorney, one will be appointed to you free of charge before any questioning if you want. Do you understand? Yes. So just to make it clear, I didn't force you to come here. I haven't forced you to, to talk to me. Um, you decided you want to talk to me freely and voluntarily, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, before we get started, what we're going to do is, um, obviously, when this type of stuff happens, uh, we write lots of search warrants and do lots of uh, investigative work, in which I have done in this case, okay? Um, I do have a search warrant uh, to obtain your DNA and to obtain uh, your fingerprints and stuff, okay? okay? The DNA is just done by a swab. Basically, uh, I'll have somebody swab. She'll take pictures of you. We'll do them right here. It won't be in public, okay? And then she'll just swab uh, the inside of your mouth and get a little DNA out of it. And we're going to we'll use that, obviously, to cross-reference that stuff and prove it, okay? So she's coming over now to do that. Um, and so it's not DNA this time. I'm sorry? It's not DNA no. This time. no, 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 no. We will use that DNA. It's not going to go in the system, okay? Let me rephrase that. We will use that DNA to eliminate the other people at the scene and that type of stuff, okay? Um, so that's all it's going to be. It's just going to be used to eliminate you from the scene. Okay? Which we know you weren't there. Okay? Alright? Okay. So let me see if she's here. And we'll get that going real quick and then we can just start talking. Alright? She's not here yet, so uh, we can get started and then we can just stop whenever, whenever she uh, gets here. Okay. So we've had multiple conversations up to this date, and today is the 19th of uh, November, and it's about 4.45. Okay, so we know, I know that uh, through this investigation there's been several times and you haven't been honest with me, so I'm going to get pretty honest with you right now, okay? I'm sorry. It's okay. I understand you were probably upset and scared, and you didn't know what to say. So. I know a lot of information, and I can't give this information out, obviously through the investigation, because I do not want that to be revealed, okay? So I know tons of stuff about all of this that's gone on, and I want you to tell me the truth, okay? I need the truth, okay? Um, so let's start out with Kate. So everything, so your marriage, did you lie about me that you married Robert, you met him when you were 18, you guys lived in Prescott, moved to County. No, that, no, that's true. Okay. So then let's talk about when you started working at Costco. Let's talk about that. Okay. How long ago was that? I was there for almost three years. And you remember when you started working there? Friendly. 
And this is, and when did you meet him? So you started in November. What, at what point do you think you met him? So maybe early 2013? Uh, yeah. Okay. And so it started out by him coming and getting samples from you, and you guys just started having a normal conversation. What kind of conversations did you guys have? Just basic stuff like, hey, where do you work at? Just like, yeah. What else? Uh, just, you know, fire department stuff, just like gets called. And, um, you know, like I said, I'm a people person, and I talk to a lot of people for hours in there, believe it or not. Some people come in there just for the demo girls to to talk, um, you know. So just fire department stuff, you know, like what's your best call, you know, that kind of a thing. And then just kind of kept talking. What other stuff did you guys talk about? Life and uh, just. Well, we're going back to, to him. Um, there was a uh, other party that we were going to, and it was actually other other um, was friends of friend, friends of friends. Okay, so our friends friends were having a party, oh. and they were fire department people. Oh, and uh, so I had that's what that's what started it. I mean, that's what that's how I I gave him my phone number, and I said. Um, Oh, do you know um, this couple? And, and he said, oh yeah, I think so. Like, are you going to that party kind of thing? And, um, and then he's like, well, maybe I'll see you there. Like, what's your number? And I had never given out my number to like a stranger before. And I did, I instantly like felt this like, oh my gosh. And I had thought prior to that, that I had mentioned our, you know, and I always do. That's like my that's like my protection, especially with with other you know men. You yeah. know, like I always brought up Robert right away. So I'd never done that before, and I felt bad. And uh, but then he called and messaged me, and I was just like, oh my gosh! Like I got myself into so I didn't answer it or respond. And he apologized. He was like, are you married? I'm so sorry. And then I put, yeah, I thought that you knew that. It's no problem. It's okay. Um, and that's where that started. Okay. So you gave me your phone number. And you guys never talked about you being married? Because you guys talk about life. But you well, this was in the beginning. Okay. Yeah. And then, we, then that's when we start, you know, talking about life and more, you know, like a friend, a friendship, okay. you know. Did you feel guilty about that? Um, you know, the funny thing, after I told him I was married, he was sincerely, like, sorry. And I felt bad, too. I was just like, oh, yeah, no, no worries. It's, it's okay. It's all good. Um, I didn't, I didn't feel that bad. Because I, I social, I talk to a lot of people, and Rob and I were, were open. Like, Rob was, he was pretty casual with me okay. and my relationship with others. So, he was pretty secure, and he wasn't an insecure type. And how often did you come into the Costco? In it quite a bit. In Victorville? Like quite a bit, like yeah, once a week, twice a week. Twice, three times a week, maybe. I go to Costco once in a month and I'm like, ah, you know. So, okay. He was there obviously to see you. He wanted to talk to you. Um, 
so after you gave him the phone number for the first time, and he knew that you were married, how much did you guys talk after that? How, how frequently? Um, it, it wasn't a lot um, in the beginning, you know, and then we just started talking a lot more, a lot more, a lot more, okay. you know? Okay. Now, we found a, a relationship. Okay. Like talking in person and on the phone and stuff like that. Um, how about any uh, meetings after work? Did you ever meet with him after work? I would see him, yeah. But just for short, you know, just. So, um, a lot of times he'd come in later and then end up like walking out with me kind of thing. Okay. So. Now, <clears throat> so he would come visit you, you'd have to talk there, and then he'd walk you out to the car or whatever. So, um, I, at what point did it become a sexual relationship? Uh, a year, a year later. So we talked for 2014? So this year? Uh, so before before that. Um, you met him in, in 2014? Probably, let's say, probably talked for like, I, I am honestly like super bad with time and mm-hmm. dates. Let's say, let's just round about eight months, maybe, or or six months, or something like that. Like it wasn't, um, it wasn't right away, anything like that, you know. So. She's here. Real quick, we'll do this real quick, and then we'll finish. Okay. Do you want overalls too, or no? Uh, no, I don't think I need it. Okay, so it's just like this one. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. How about the subject flavor handbook? Maybe that's 
Okay, so you're going to sign right there on the X, right there, and then right there. She might need to wash her hands after, so you didn't use black powder. So you didn't use, um, like, uh, basically black wipes? You can use it, so you can see. I'm using black powder. So I'll just, okay, we'll just take your brush and do it. up to you because I'm going to use black powder on you so we can either try and take your jacket off because it's going to be on you. So it's up to you. You want power roll them up the sleeves up? Uh, yeah, if you want to roll your same Okay. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. Is it okay? Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's good. Okay, thank you. 
Yeah, because it, it'll be better. And then we'll have this will wash for more time. I won't do it. You can go with that. Just uh, we'll do two. I'll do two.
Yeah, I would probably win. Yeah, I would probably win. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Okay, here's, um, you know, I actually need to do it right here. Just uh, try not to get it on the pen itself so we don't have to redo our thing. Your signature. Okay, all right. And here's the bottom.
would you guys meet up? Uh, a couple times a week. Okay. And so this was six months after. I'm sorry. Sometimes, not sometimes like once a week or. Just depending on what's happening. Yeah. Okay. So this was six months after you met, or s mm -hmm. okay. So if you met in maybe early thir 2013, I'm sorry, 20 2014 this year, right? No, it's been over a year. So okay. probably like a year and a half time. Because at the end of 2012 is right because you met in early 2013. Okay. So mid to 2013. Okay. Now, basic uh, uh, friendship relationship, uh, sexual relationship, maybe once or twice a week. And then, um, so, I mean, and obviously this relationship goes on and on. You guys talk about all kinds of stuff, right? Um, tell me about, uh, did Rob ever suspect anything? No, Robert had uh, found my phone. Tell me about that. And he wasn't, you know, he's like, who's, who's this dude? And... And he had seen him out once before. He only um, met him once. So he was just like, you know, what's up? How did this? How did this go down? And um, I just kind of told him like, I don't, I, I don't know. It just happened. And um, Jonathan apologized to Robert. Talked to him, he apologized to him. And we felt bad, you know. And um, felt bad. And Rob and I just kind of kept going, you know. And Jonathan and I stopped talking. And I saw him in Costco probably, let's say, three months later. And, and honestly, detective, like I'm so bad with time, it could have been give or take, or you know. But it was it was a little while, and I hadn't seen him. When did Rob find out? And do you remember when it was? What month it was? Or about what time? So this is gonna be in 20, 2013, You found out, right? June. June twenty thirteen. And what happened that day? And how did you when you found out about it? What was going on? He was going to have the next day off. He had um, he had been out the night before, and I kind of had too much to drink. Oh. And I didn't. I wasn't paying attention to my phone. So he'd been out the night before, and he'd already taken like the next day off, and he was kind of like we had. I hate talking about this. This is why I didn't. I know, it's, I know, I know. Um, like Rob and I just had sex. Like we got him like for eight and it was kind of like a, like, okay. Um, and he'd ask me questions, you know. And I just kind of would answer them as, as he asked, but... And we kind of didn't, we didn't talk about it. He didn't like, he didn't like, um, to, you know, like problems, you know. Now, when he asked you these questions, did you tell him the truth or did you just tell him a little bit of information? Um, a little bit, not in like detail, but I would answer his questions, you know. And I seriously didn't, I was just like, I, I don't know how it happened. Um, like I did tell you, you were distracted with so many things, friends and partying, and, um, and we have had open relationships, you know, I kind of, I threw that at him, you know, so this was prior, and parties and just kind of like that kind of, of a, of a lifestyle. More, more like now the kids weren't exposed to that firsthand. They were probably, not probably, they were exposed to me drinking, you know, like 
too much mom's sleeping just a little bit heavy load um so Ty, we talked about your open relationship before when you told me you didn't have one um I was I was straight and I didn't want any of this to to come out you know did you think this would ever come out I was um that's I did driven you know it's, it's shameful. It's terrible. And I'm, I'm feeling it. Uh, I understand. Did you guys have open relationships such as you would meet other people at parties and stuff and have sexual encounters? Or was it up to work? Somehow. And that was just kind of like a Rob and I thing we had years ago. It was this couple. And that's what started me. We've never done anything like that. Right. You know? and we were uh, new to Silver Lake because Robbie was in the kindergarten. And yeah, we met this kooky couple. I mean, you know, the chick for sure, the woman. And, uh, but I am a people person, so is Robert. And, um, That was just a crazy experience with her and her husband. What are their names? Uh, Nicole and Dale. Oh. Did you hear about have you heard about them? No. Well they lived out there, so Robbie was in kindergarten. He's oh. eleven now, so oh, okay. but that's where the door opened and Robert was um, I I hate to talk about him, Ellie, you know, because I don't want to dishonor him. I feel like this is such a dishonor to him. But he was a man. Yeah, so he was he was all about it, you know, to the end of it, like whatever we had to do. And this went on. And uh, oh my gosh, I never had such troubles, you know. And and I told Robert like we should not get in too deep with these two of them. Well, they're end up, they're divorced now. But, uh, just kind of one of those things, so it just kind of turned into, like, it's just sexual bringing that kind of thing, you know? Yeah. But, then, like, I don't be like that kind of stuff online, you know? And just pretty much, like, any... That was kind of just, then, it was just, uh, kind of like, oh, bring this cool with it. So, did you know him have any other relationships like outside your marriage without being married? No, she was one that out, you know, she was the only one that I knew. That's why I was wondering too if there was. There. And I was honest with you, I didn't, I don't know of any other relationships like that. Okay. Um, so, did you think it would be okay, I mean, with Rob, if, if you were seeing Jonathan, because, you know, you guys kind of had that open relationship, or did you feel... I guess that's how I justified it, you know, it's kind of like, I was just feeling like my own thing, and he was so busy, and he was a, um, just worker, and people pleaser, and party young, and not wanting anything to be missed, even though, by, by the end, you know, I... I just talked to him, we have to kind of refocus some things, and, and uh, he wasn't, he wasn't, um, now Robert would have done anything, you know, as far as in the moment.
what you do. You spent so much years of him. Um,
I mean, it makes you start believing this stuff about you, which probably wasn't true. Do you remember any, do you remember a specific date that Paul Roberts murdered that he told you, that Jonathan said, I could, we could be together and live for God? Do I remember a date? Yeah, like maybe how, like, a week before, in a month before, all the time? More than, yeah, more than um, we talked about, you know, living for God. Mm-hmm. More. Um, I'll say maybe a month or two, maybe three. Did you know that he had planned to murder your husband? No. No. You didn't know that? No, I did not know that he planned on murdering Robert. Because he did. I, I can't. After the murder, has he talked to you about it and told you that he did it? No, he never said. Never ever? He never said I killed Robert. Do you know that he has two firearms that are in the same caliber as the one that killed Robert? Same caliber? Mm-hmm. What's that? It's the same size bullet. Same as that bullet. I just knew that he carried, he was an investigator for uh, the fire, fire service. And what kind of investigations did he do? Fire investigations, but he could carry a gun. Arson stuff? Mm-hmm. How long have you been doing that? Uh, not that long. He's new to the, new to the, works, you know. He's done a lot of research. I know it. Well, yeah, I mean, he's been telling you all about my investigation, about how my investigation goes, what I'm doing. Yeah. Totally, totally feeding you a lot of bullshit. About the way things go. And for, and for some reason, it made me feel better. Like, I don't know why he made me feel better. He made me feel better just talking with him and just, like, I felt like the whole affair thing was just gonna put our family in me. You know what I mean? Like that's, I just felt like the whole thing was a fair, in my head, a fair, fair. And you go like that, uh, I just thought, how horrible would that be? An affair? An affair, yeah. You ever know anybody's had an affair in the marriage? Yeah, but I feel like, um, it felt so bad right now because, but their spouse wasn't murdered, you know. So right. it was like, oh my gosh, this is like such horrible timing. This is horrible timing. I don't know why this is happening. I don't know why the timing is, is like this, you know. And then when you start feeling, you know, so, you know, questioning and it's like, oh. You know. I can tell you that. So, and we've gone and we have discussed it a lot, you know, kind of like what, what to, you know, go over and say, 
Why did you discuss that? About the about the uh, about what to go over, what to say to me. Why would you guys have to discuss that? It's just an affair. Well, no, to take off, to take off, not to, no, um, not to, not for the, not for the affair to be about. That, that's just kind of like, um, you know, we never have an affair. No, nope. um, we have a great marriage. Perfect. Everything's perfect. Jonathan's had with you about not talking to me and not telling me the truth, that was to conceal him committing the murder. That's all it was. It wasn't about the affair. It was about him. I felt like it was about the affair. Like, I felt like it so amplified because Matt was murdered and I just never... I... It, but I mean, it wasn't about the affair. He's trying to tell you all this information and feed you all this this bullshit because he didn't want it to be revealed that he was having an affair with you because he knows that you're going to come look at him, look for him and talk to him. You know what I mean? That's what this all is about. All these conversations, this hundred conversations you guys have had, you know, in the last. I that our affair would be discovered.
He was relating it to murder. Not an affair. You know what I mean? Let's talk about um, last um, last week when we met. You leave here. Mm-hmm. We talked to him on the phone with your sister in the car. Mm-hmm. Still a little bit. You're not blaming your sister now a whole lot. I understand. Um, and then there was another conversation you had with him. After you and I spoke, and you called him and said, Hey, we're good. I'll call you in a little bit. Remember that? I mean, I don't know about the call you in a little bit, um, what that part was about, but um, I just felt like uh, I was just worried about, about, uh, about phone records. conversation about me too. Remember the conversation? Well, lots of them. I mean, lots of them out there almost every conversation you guys have. Right? Um, yeah, I didn't realize that he, I mean, he, like, I never had said your first name or mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't believe. And, um, and he, he looked in, you know, kind of just checking you out. And, uh, How did you do that? Awesome. You know, I,
husband is killed, and I'm worried about covering up an affair. There's bigger things than having an affair. That's murder, right? I mean, at that point in time, I'd be like, here's all my cards. I'm not doing anything wrong, except having an affair. You should have that one, brother. That's what I would have said. My mind has not got that big like that. Yeah, I mean, it hasn't. It honestly hasn't. It's like. I think all bets are off. Once somebody gets killed, murdered, shot, no more, not coming back. Kids with no father. Fuck the affair. Who cares? You know what I mean? Yeah. I would have been like, let me talk to you. I got to tell you about this affair. I didn't do anything wrong, except for having an affair. There were a few days where I had it so heavy on my heart. Just. But you never said anything. I asked you dozens of times. Do you have any information for me? Do you have anything else you'd like to tell me? I know, I'm thinking outside of my affair. And oh, no, no, I'm thinking about, tell me anything. Expect somebody to diligently be working to solve the murder of your husband. Because I didn't, I didn't suspect Jonathan. But you told me earlier that you did at some point. Yeah, but I, it wasn't like um, at the beginning. This is coming down to to these. Um, these photos and some of the things that have been said recently. What? What's, that, what's been said recently? Um, just, you know, it could be me on the video. It could, um, just a discussion like that in the past probably month, maybe two weeks. Yeah. How about, um, So, that to me is very suspicious. For you to quickly call him on your burner phone after we get off the phone, like seconds after we get off the phone. Call me on the station phone. And then, you hear a clicking noise, thinking that we're listening to your call. It turns out it's from the station. It apparently didn't make a clicking noise when you talk on the phone. That's very suspicious. 
more than just trying to make himself unfair. That's it. To me, that's suspicious until we, I mean, every detective around here. Yeah, well, I could do it, that would be suspicious. I mean, that, just... That's how I felt. I seriously felt like... Yeah, I felt like this is... This is a very way, but yet I continued. There's really no explanation for my behavior as far as that goes. Like, I, now that I see it like this, it's almost like talking and, and, and kind of continuing. looks really bad because you have an affair. Yeah. You have a motivator for money. Right? This looks terrible. You're the murderer. Continue an affair. And people lying to conceal the affair. And to conceal the murder. Before. I can't imagine. Lied about I can't imagine him saying that. The motorcycle. 
He's lied about talking to Robert three other times before the murder. He lied about murdering Robert, driving over there to Tashkeen, meeting Robert. He, he, he talked to Robert three other times. Oh, yeah. Talk about his voice phone he got. A what? Voice, voice, voice over internet protocol. What's that? Well, he called you on a number that gave you a heart attack. The 661 area code number. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. He almost gave me a heart attack. Um, so why would he go to the extent of getting a phone that you couldn't track, or he, he thinks we couldn't track, and thinks we would go to internet phone? And why would he do that? For an affair. It's all about the murder. Seriously, that's what this is all about. It's not about the affair. The affair is nothing. It's about concealing everything for the murder. So why would he go get a, uh, the voice phone? I, I didn't know that he had that until he called from that. And you were tripping out, huh? Yeah, I was just six. I was like, oh, oh Detective Lyon has the uh, burner phone for sure. Right. Yeah. Oh, I had the burner phone. It's a long time ago. I never said you weren't a good detective. Um, well, I think you did say a few things. I don't remember exactly, but you did talk about me. It wasn't bad. Hmm. I... So let me explain to you. Honestly, we're kind of spinning around those. We're just kind of going over stuff now. We're not giving you any information that I need. Okay. Okay. I need to get some hard information from you. I need you to tell me. You're here. giving me the hard information. I'm giving you a lot of it. Yeah. Lots. You know, this is. I have books and books and books and books of evidence. On this whole thing. I mean, I can stack the books up, and David Sanders told you. On all the evidence I've collected during this last three months and one day. Tons of it. You need to be honest with me. Because he's going to tell me. He's going to tell me exactly what happened. Well, good. Because you know why? Because he has to. He has to tell somebody this. He's going to have to tell me what happened. For as much as he's curious, right? Even minds are curious. They want to know what evidence do you have to show that I did this? All of our minds are curious. And he is 
going to ask, he said, I want to know. What do you have? And he said, I want. What you tell him? But what I'm wondering is what he's going to tell me about you. Okay. Why would you tell him where Robert worked at? Tell me, why would you give that information to him? I'm trying to think of probably the, a conversation. Did you guys have any specific conversations before the murder, before the day of the murder, a couple of days before about him maybe going on a ride on his motorcycle? Oh, 
I think that in this master plan was the uh, was the whole word about that in the How old is she? She was 14. She was 15 or 15. Mm -hmm. What does she want? Huh? What does she want right now? She wants a laptop. Give me a second. Uh, Detective Meyer, during uh, that interview, you left uh, multiple times some dead spots in the recording. What were you doing at that time? Uh, there were several moments uh, where I left the room uh, basically to speak with other investigators who had been working with me on the case. There was a room uh, pretty close to the room that I was interviewing Sabrina in, and they could watch a live feed of what was going on. Um, so I would go meet with them really quickly to find out if there was anything else that we needed to touch bases on. At that point, um, through the investigation, I was trying to give her an opportunity to give me some more information and, and uh, provide some truth. And then at the end of People's 80, uh, you moved Miss Lamone to another location? Yes. At the very end of that uh, portion of the interview, uh, at that point, uh, Jonathan Hearn was present at headquarters. So I moved uh, Miss Lamone to a separate room we have uh, that has a table, a couch, and stuff uh, while we could speak with uh, Mr. Hearn. Uh, you mentioned uh, towards the end of People's 80, you kept saying, I wonder what Jonathan's going to say. Um, did you receive any information from Jonathan Hearn that day? No, we did not. At that point, he decided he did not want to talk to the investigators. Okay. Uh, you said that you moved Miss Lamone to another room? Yes, sir. That room, uh, does it have the same capabilities of audio and visual recording? That room does not. It's uh, more of a soft room. Uh, like I said, there's a couch in there, uh, a table, some chairs. And that room does not have the capabilities uh, with a 
video or audio recording. Okay. Uh, did, was a further continuation of the interview with Ms. Lamone, uh, did it occur at that same location later on after uh, your contact with Mr. Hearn? Yes, after we had a chance to speak with Mr. Hearn briefly, we then moved uh, Sabrina back into the interview room one uh, to finish the interview.
think that have to you? second, everything is cool, you're bending down, getting a meter in the water, next second you're fighting for your life, fighting for your life, this guy's gonna fucking kill you. He was struggling. Yeah, they're fighting with a gun, and then pow, the gun goes off. And then what are you thinking? You start thinking about your life. Your kids and all this shit. You know what I mean? Nobody knows what Rob was thinking, but he's speculating, you know. He's thinking, oh my god, I'm gonna get this gun from this guy. So you think that, I mean, you tell him that, hey, uh, 
hours at McDonald's, we at work, we do 12-hour shifts, we, we can come over, we can hang out, and he's thinking, today's the day. I'm going to take that drive. And I'm going to go take care of business so I can be with her, so I can have her and her family. The sad thing for the kids. Horrible. Because they lost their dad. And he was a good dad. Find out what 
that place is. I couldn't even find it when I sent us there. That's my fault. I know. Absolutely. What's it look like to me? No. Let me tell you what it looked like to a jury. This is all I do, all I've been doing for many years. Let me tell you what a jury's going to think. The same thing I am right now, and the same thing you are. We've got some problems. You need to tell me why you're not an accomplice to this murder. Why am I not? Yeah. Because I didn't want Robert dead. I would never want him dead. Ever. Yes, you did. You guys have been talking for weeks and weeks about how this is God's will. That you guys get together and marry. It's all God's will. Dead. It's almost every conversation of every day about how uh, killing your husband and you, get, you two getting together is God's will. That's Sheba. Did we talk about that? They had said. Um, well, tell me that story. Tell I, me the story. I don't know about Sheba. I don't know that. I don't know it. You don't know that story? He says that's our that's our that's our life, and you went yes. Well, whatever I read, like I, um, you, you don't remember? No, I don't remember. He takes another man's wife that has his husband murdered. Had her husband murdered. Killed. Because here, it sounds to me like the woman fell in love with another man and had her husband killed. I would never want Robert killed, ever. Why did you tell him where Robert's at? I was going to see him and I would tell him when Robert was working and stuff. And Why would you be worried about the DNA stuff he found? I thought that was good. No, DNA. no, that's not what the conversations are. No. Well, the DNA was no, a good thing. No, panic. Okay. No. I can read a few of them to you, that's not. Yeah, well. You talk about how good it is after you figure out we're probably listening to you. Before now, it's all panic, which is exactly why we told you that. Okay. I just didn't want to be publicized. No, you, you two yeah. already, you, both of you have already told people about this affair. Why keep it from us? We knew about it from the minute. He got five, he's got 500 of your phone calls on his thing every day. You think we're not going to know? I thought that um, I didn't. I didn't know. I was. I was worried about that. I know. It doesn't look bad. I know how bad. I know that it looks bad, but. I think this past looked bad. It looked bad for a while, and then it got bad. Because we talked about other stuff, but you have to know. We can't tell you all of this. The thing's got to get prosecuted, okay? But it looked bad for a while, and then it just got bad. And I think it's because it is bad. Okay. Yeah. All we talk about is this: we have to stop sinning, and you guys are still together. I, I, I'm confused with these calls. I really am. Do you think God meant for you and Jonathan to be together? Is that what you, you guys are talking about? It's when you're praying that the DNA doesn't make doesn't let us find out. Would you want me to read that one to you? I guess. You're praying that the DNA doesn't let us find out. Find out what? If his DNA is at the scene of the murder, what am I going to find out? That you two are laying around together? I'll well, find out that Jonathan killed you. We already knew that. We had those motorcycle pictures long before you know. Okay? And we had somebody call us and say, you need to look at this guy right here. Months ago. Not weeks. Because he's calling us up, crying, trying to apologize for something and we haven't figured out what he did. But he keeps crying and apologizing. Okay? Tell you what he did with the cell phone? No, I didn't even have that. You notice he got a different bike on the bike? Louder. The exhaust is louder, it sounds louder. I'll be honest, I don't pay attention to any of that kind of stuff. I just know the writing on the bike. That's all. Yesterday, when I told you that 
that the people who just came, just came in and we had a John. How can you give me two different John's names? Because that was John. Those were the John's that were all worked with. Why wouldn't you just tell me then? I mean, you had to know that shit hit the fan. Yeah, it felt like, I don't know, John had been okay. Um, Why wouldn't you tell me? It's not just about an affair. Your husband was murdered. That's more important than the spring affair you had for having. Here's another thing. I can tell you, I don't care where the hell I was at. Day, night, whatever. If my wife was murdered, I would be standing at that fucking scene, finding out why and what. Give me some answers now. And he didn't even come out there. He told us that, that we weren't allowed to. I don't, I don't care if they told me I couldn't go out there. I would be there, standing there, saying, I want to tell me something. You didn't. I don't care if they told me I couldn't. You're going to tell me that I can't drive a fucking taxi. It's a free world. I'm going to go where I want to go. And I'm going to go there and I'm going to talk to whoever to find out what's going on. That's suspicious to me, too. I know you're having an affair. You're living too. Oh, I wanted to. Go. I wanted to come up. But you're living two different lives and stuff, like you said. I said I was all roped off, and they won't let anybody oh, out. I, I was sure and, and getting on with that crazy. scene. I don't know what the hell happened to my life. God well, has a purpose. He sees all. He does. He knows all. He does. He has a purpose for us in our marriage. He even knew that Rob was going to get killed. When he told you that's him in the video, why were you not burning his phone up to tell you when I found out who killed my husband? I mean, he said it looked like him. Because your relationship with Jonathan is more important than your husband was. No. You should have been tearing his phone up. Jonathan just told me that's him in the video. Okay? Why didn't we get that call? I asked him, I said, what do we do? You don't need to ask him anything. Tell me why you didn't call us. Because he said it could have been planned. Like it could no, have been. there's no could have. I, okay? That, that's not, it's a glass of water. It's not, a, it's not a house. It's not a car. I can't tell you that, well, that could be a chair. It's a glass of water. That could be me in the video. What do you mean, it could be you? It either is or is not. And if he's in the video, that's a video of the suspect. We all know that. You know that, don't you? And I got that video walked into the place where your husband was and killed him, and then ran off. And he tells you that could be me in the video. What did you think? I'm more than confused here, Korea. I'm really telling you, I think you're flat in the middle of this murder. I think he's such a husband, I've had him killed by Jonathan, so you two can be together. Yeah. I can tell you, that's not going to happen, ever. Yeah. Okay? You need to get that through your head now. You are not going to be together. He's going to end up going to prison for the rest of his life, and I've got some serious doubts about you. Okay? There's no reason to tell your boyfriend exactly where your husband is working. Absolutely none. Right down to the building. What's the purpose? There can only be one. Tell me another one. I'm waiting. Tell me why you would tell him exactly where Rob's at. You can't find that place by accident. We knew somebody told him. I'll be honest with you, from day one, when he told me about I wasn't there to murder him. He came back and told me. So we got a problem. It's a long time of the day for somebody to get burglarized. And burglars don't just shoot people for no reason. Okay? Something else went on. It was all fishy looking. It was real fishy to me. I said, somebody has got a relationship. We better stop looking at it. I was a three or four days after the murder before we knew anything. 
Okay? Because this whole thing stuck to me from, from day one. Somebody told him, somebody told somebody where that guy went at. You can't even find him. There's not anything to take in that place anyway. All those businesses next door have got tons of stuff that you could sell. Not that place. Tools. That's it. Train repair craft. You can't sell that. He told you that could be me in the video. That should have been the end of it right there. And when I told you that that was our suspect, and you didn't say anything. You know what I mean? I said, This is our suspect. Like, no, okay. Gigs up. That's Jonathan Hearn. You didn't tell me anything. I should have told you that. You, you but... should have. The black helmet. I, I didn't he never told you with him in the video, Sabrina, you already knew it. Okay? He didn't tell you that. You already knew it. So you know, Dave Willis, him. You know how he walks. That was my brother in that video. I peg him in a minute. You know. And when, when, when we put the picture of Jonathan on his bike down in front of you, you don't need to sit and stare at it for 15 minutes. You knew exactly who it was. And you should have said it. It's Jonathan. That's Jonathan's bike. Everybody else did. Why couldn't you say it? You knew it was him, you knew it was him on his bike. You know exactly where the picture's taken. Where is it taken? Yeah, it's taken about 300 feet from where your husband's killed. He's leaving right after he kills him. Okay? He told you he did this, and he told you because you guys wanted to be that he wants to be with you. You need to tell us now. If not, all we're left to think with. Mr. Shields, stop the uh, 81A on page 18. We'll take our afternoon recess there. 15 minutes. Remember not to form or express any opinion or discuss the case. Mr. Smith, if you'd like to continue. We'll be left off with the 81, page 18. Is that you set this whole thing up. If he went and did something stupid, okay, you need to tell us now. Well, you have it right there. I don't have it. I want it out of your mouth because we've not got any truth out of your mouth. And if I don't start well, getting something, I'm you, I'm left to believe exactly what I really believe. Somebody told him where Rob was, exactly where Rob was, he were over there him. And you know, if we've been listening to what you guys have been talking about for weeks and weeks, what we've done, okay? Yeah, I understand. And he comes down here, and he purposely tells you we haven't got nothing, just to see what you'll say. And you burn up the phone. They ain't got nothing, okay? We're okay. They ain't got nothing. What's it sound like? What will it sound like? Well, he did say that yesterday. I don't know. At what point did he tell you he shot Rob? And don't tell me he did. I know better. He said that was him yesterday. No. 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 I ain't gonna cut it. Hey? He never said he shot You think about six or seven old ladies sitting on that jury, and he's, this guy says, that's, that's me in the video. Huh? And they said, what happened? I don't know. She didn't come. She, she still, it took us, you know, 15 minutes into an interview to get her to say that. She didn't call us. Okay? And the prosecutor says, folks, that's how much she cares about the husband. Okay? Her new boyfriend killed him, and she don't even care. And what will your kids think when they find out? And the whole world is going to find out in the next three days because all this paperwork goes public. Not a thing we do about it. Okay? All kinds of stuff. Phone calls, everything. You want, to, you want people hearing some of that stuff without explaining some of this stuff to us? No. Tell me when he told you he killed your husband because he did and he told you. Okay? Or you knew it already. If he didn't tell you... You knew it already. And you knew it before he did it. I didn't know. Then how did he find out where your husband is to go kill him? My fault. Yes, absolutely. You're absolutely right. Yes. When he asked about where your husband is, what do you think he's asking for? 
go buy him a milkshake, say hi, I'm doing your wife. But what do you think he's going to do? When did he tell you? You're not going to get another shot at this, I'm telling you. We're going to leave here in a minute, and we're going to talk to you again. You'll want to, but your attorney won't let you, and it's too late. I won't talk to you either. Really, we're done. We will take what we have and go with it. You wouldn't be here if we didn't have enough. Okay? Bring it up if you did something and you can't, you don't want to tell us that you've got to now. You understand? I understand. If you didn't, if, if you never intended for him to go do this, and he went and did it, and you didn't plan this and you had pain, and you get scared because he's done it, you're, you think you're wrapped up. I can understand that. I've had a lot of people in these situations, a lot. Bunches of them. Little girls that drive people, little gangsters to all, but I didn't know they were going to go in there and kill people. It happens, okay? Yeah, and it doesn't, it doesn't mean that you're in the middle of this plot of it, planned it, or anything else. He may have went off and done something stupid on his own, but don't tell me you didn't know, because we know we did. This has been nothing but cover up. Oh my God, I hope they don't. God wants it to be the guy. I hope the DNA doesn't. Okay? That's got nothing to do with this affair. What the DNA got to do with you two being together? And how are we going to find out that you two are right if all we have is his DNA? Yeah. Hey? His DNA at the scene means only one thing. That's a suspect. Plan to kill Brock? No. Oh my God, no. When did Jonathan tell you to get it? Don't tell me yesterday again. He never told. He never yes, he came did. out. And yes, he said, did. He's, yes, he did. You guys are doing nothing but hiding this thing the whole time. Yes, he did. No. Well, what are you trying to hide? I know. I, okay, I know it, it doesn't look good. No. There's a difference between does it look good and absolutely is not good. This is absolutely not good. I understand that. Okay. I understand that. He never told me that he was going up there that day. I had told him more to Robert. Why? We're still back to that one, and I'm still sitting here waiting for, for a reason why you would tell Jonathan where your husband is. Are you going to come up with some answer between now and, and trial time? They're going to see each other. So you talk to them. About like what? Why. That's why. Um, About what? What's he going to say? i got to know. Yeah. I'm sending my boyfriend to talk to my husband. No, I never, no, he never... Said he was what would you to think he was going to do if he's asking about where Rob's at? He didn't ask that day. Why did you tell him? I told him, like, prior in conversations. Why? He asked. Why? I believe. Uh, just, about, about to have to be, like, we, we just talked about, like, what Rob did and just talked. Did you know what Rob did? Yeah, but as a, as a, to have to be as a responder. Okay, so why, why is it important for, for anybody in the world, really, to know exactly where Rob's at? Well, from your, now on the other side, I, I don't know. He shouldn't have. And I shouldn't have. It. When you told him exactly where Rob was at, and Rob ends up getting killed, did you put two and two together at all? At first, I, I, I was in shock. I couldn't believe. I couldn't believe what I heard. I couldn't believe that it happened. I didn't. I didn't know what happened. I didn't know why. You, you, you didn't figure out. Gee, I just told Jonathan, who wants to be with me forever, does not want me to be with my husband. Come back and say again. Exactly where my husband is, and now my husband gets killed in the middle of a sunny afternoon in broad daylight. No, I didn't. That, that I didn't, didn't dawn on you? I didn't think of him. No, I didn't. I thought, I, I couldn't believe Rob was gone. And I thought about our, I thought about our affair. And I felt, I couldn't, I can't describe it.
describe how I felt. Okay, t- tell me anybody else in the world that have a reason besides John to kill their husband. Anybody. Had they owe money, they had the Russian mafia, had they, had they, had they, had they beat up people, had they alleged rapists or anything, anything at all. So who, who had the only motive that you know of to kill your husband? It's the only thing I thought it was. Um... What did Jonathan have to gain if he killed Rob? What surprise? You. Correct? And he had you all to himself. Is that correct? Yes. And he gets killed after you tell him where he's at. And you don't put it, put it together. I don't think you're that dumb, Sabrina. I really don't. No one's going to. They were back to you have him killed. Because if Jonathan, if you don't suspect it, and at some point Jonathan's got to tell him, did did you ask him, hey Jonathan, don't you think it's odd that after I tell you where he's at, somebody goes over there and tell him for no apparent reason? I did say. And? And? What were the answers? What did he say? Oh, no, I didn't? And he just said, that's crazy. And you believe him? Enough to stay with him, you did. But make future plans. Start talking about how you're going to raise Rob's children, children with him. Take out the handguns he owns. How many? Uh, I just I just knew that he had one gun. Probably about a 45 of him, 45 caliber. I didn't know what kind it was. I think he's got one and it's missing. Nobody's find it. I wonder where that's at. Thank God he's still your husband. The only thing worse than keeping the murder weapon. Is getting rid of it when it's registered to you. Not being able to tell us where it's at. Oops, I lost it. Oop, I don't know where it's at. Oh, I forgot where I put it. That's what he said. You know what I mean? You know how stupid that sounds? tell Jonathan like directions that day it was prior like we talked about um, and uh, like months it was months uh, I'd say probably months prior and I, I want to remember how exactly that conversation went so how did Jonathan know he's there that day I, I had told him you told him Jonathan's a Hatchby no, Robert isn't Robert sorry Robert's a Hatchby working and that day he gets murdered, and you don't figure that out. I can talk to John. And you don't bother to tell him or anyone else. By the way, the day my husband is murdered, I told my boyfriend where he was. What's it sound like? What's it going to sound I like, Sabrina? That. I understand that. I can go on and on with this thing, and that's going to happen at the trial. But I'm not going on much longer. The rest of this will be one year later, and probably not what we should have, ever. Okay. If you didn't have any part of this thing, and we all think you did, you wouldn't be here. You need to start figuring out how to convince us that you did it now. I told you, he did something stupid, and you didn't know he did it, and you had nothing to do with planning it. Okay? And he says, sorry, honey, I had to do this for us to be together. Whatever he did, whatever he told you, you need to tell us now. Okay? If you're going to stick to this, uh, yesterday he finally told me he killed my husband. Basically. Well, these conversations have been the same, you know, since. No, they haven't. 
No, they're, they're, they've changed drastically all, all the time. The only major thing is God wants you two to be together according to Him. And God sees everything and knows everything. What did God see that they Rob got killed? Same thing we saw. His motorcycle jumped his motorcycle leaving the crime scene. Okay? I mean, who does he think he's fooling? Who are you guys fooling him? I don't get it. He tells you that you and Kim are David and Bathsheba's story, and you agree? I didn't, I didn't. You'll hear that again, trust me. That one was almost unbelievable for me, because that's exactly what's happened. Exactly. Know that for us to be together, one spouse has got to be out of the picture permanently. Now, why divorce was an option, I don't, I don't know. Uh, divorce would have been an option for me, not murder. Well, then why did it get to this? Okay. Was it not an option and that didn't go over well with Jonathan? That's what it sounds like. I've had a few of those. Say, so if you won't divorce him, I'll get rid of him for you. Yeah. No? I think yes. I understand. You won't divorce him, and Jonathan's got to go to plan B. Doesn't he? That means Jonathan's got to go where he's at, and he got that out of you. And frankly, I could sit here for two or three hours, and I don't think you'd ever explain that one. There's only one explanation for that one. Just exactly what I'm thinking. What are you thinking? What everybody else outside is doing thinking. Exactly what you're doing. I mean, not going to do exactly what you guys plan to do. Kill your husband. Shot him straight in the face. Okay? So you tell me what Rob done to deserve that. Tell me what Rob's children done to have their dad taken away by your boyfriend. Tell me. What did they do? And who suffers? Huh? You know. They do. Their whole life. They want their dad back. And who took them? And who helped them take it? What are they going to think? Trust me, Sabrina, I've never talked to anybody yet that thought they wouldn't get away with it. Or you wouldn't do it. Everybody does. It's all well planned. All of it. Yeah. All of the interviews are rehearsed. On the phone with him. Cam would listen to him. They were impressive. I'm going to tell you exactly what to say and not say. And we're going to Google DNA and Google all this stuff to make sure that we're not giving them enough information to find out. Okay? But that stuff we already knew. Now, before this thing comes to an end, I ask you one more time. Did Jonathan tell you he killed your husband? He never told me. Did he admire it just all the led up to all the all the things that he said?
Um, you requested this. You want to talk to Randall. Um, we're four hours into this, and you haven't said anything different to him than what you told me. Um, if you have something you need to say, right now's the time, because otherwise I'm, I'm ready to cut this off. Um, Thank you guys. I mean, you think what? Everything that has been said has been evidence that it's clear. And it's my fault for telling Jonathan where Robert was that day. And most, it most certainly is. It is. It is your fault.
Or we walked out, we needed you to sign one of, one of those uh, cards. We didn't have you sign one of those cards to put your fingerprints on, so the lady's coming over here so you can sign those. Detective if Jonathan did it, and you guys have all the evidence. I'll get it. When you sign the card, you sign this one twice. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I guess people react differently to stuff. This whole time, you just you, you, you find yourself not being able to believe it. But not, not once have you showed any, any anger or disgust, especially since you inserted it into your children's lives. That that bothered you. So, not too often I get to see good things at work. I saw that video of your son, it impacted me. And through all of this, your, your, your children really haven't been a concern to me. And 
chances are it's unfortunate because they definitely deserve a better than what you're giving them. And I hope they get it. I hope they do. They deserve a lot more than what they're getting. I, I, I wish I would have known them. Definitely under different circumstances. You know, um, well, I'm spinning my wheels. Let's get you to All right, the record reflected uh, people's 81 was played for the jury. They had a copy of the transcript.